Hey team, we're going to learn how we can save state to local storage and persistent on refresh in React. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here, make sure you hit subscribe and click that little notification bell for future web dev content. React is a very popular JavaScript library that gives us the ability to easily build UIs for the web. Taking a component as an example, we can see that we use JSX, which is basically HTML with JavaScript on top, that gives us the ability to dynamically create the experiences for the DOM. Now, part of building those dynamic experiences is storing the value that represents the state of an application or a part of an application at a particular point in time. In the example in React's documentation, they use a clock where every time that clock ticks, it wants to update the stored value, that time reference, inside of the state of the application. Now, as a somewhat more practical example, if I'm building an online store and somebody adds an item to their cart, we want to make sure that that state of the cart is updated so that that particular product and the amount of products that I have are updated in the state of that cart. Now, an important part of that state is that I know that when I refresh the page or I browse around to another page in the site, my cart state is going to be saved and I can still make sure that I can keep adding on the products on top of that original item. But in React's case, by default, that state is only stored in memory, meaning as soon as we refresh the page, we lose all that information about our current state. So to fix this, we can take advantage of the browser's local storage API that allows us to save data right inside of the storage mechanism of the browser. Meaning we can set that value and we can even get that value so that when we refresh the page, we can retrieve all of that state value and hydrate it right into our app. So to see how this works, we're going to spin up a new application using Next.js. And while Next.js is not needed for this example, you can use this with a plain and simple React application. Next.js is just a nice way to get started and easily up and running. And in particular, we're going to start off with this demo starter that I created, where it's really just going to give us some basic UI to get started with, where we're going to be able to programmatically hide this welcome banner. But you can find the link to this starter in the description if you want to follow along. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy this create next app command, where I'm going to use yarn, but you can follow along with MPX. And in my terminal, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that command. And then I'm going to also append my welcome banner to the end, which is going to be my product name, project name, and the folder that's used to create this project. So once I run that command, Next.js is going to pull down this repository that I created. It's going to install all the dependencies, and it's even going to reset Git history so that we have a fresh start. But once it's done, we can CD into that new directory and we can run yarn dev, which is going to spin up our local development server. And when we open that up inside of our browser, we can see our new application with that same exact banner. So ultimately, our goal with a banner like this is to welcome new visitors to our site. Say somebody's visiting my site for the first time, I want to make sure they know I have a newsletter and that they can sign up. But if somebody keeps coming back over and over, I don't want them to have to see this before they jump into the content. So instead, I want them to be able to click this hide button and hide it so that anytime they come back, at least before clearing their browser session, they don't have to see this banner anymore. Now, digging into our code, we're mostly going to work out of this page's index.js file, which is our home page, where if we open this up, we can see that nothing really special is going on. The only thing that we're doing is importing some posts that I preloaded into this project so that we had some content to work with. But we can see at the top here, we have that sign up banner where it's just going to list out some HTML. I have some styles to make it look halfway decent, and we're going to see how we can programmatically hide this using this button that says hide. Now, starting off with exactly that, we want to be able to use state to store a value dynamically as to whether or not we should be showing the banner. Now, to do this, we're going to use React's use state hook. So at the top of the page, I'm going to import use state destructured from React. Now, if this is your first time using React state and you seem like you're having trouble following along, it might make sense to pause for a moment and go learn a little bit more about state before continuing. But now that we have use state imported, we're going to use it to set up a new instance of state. So I'm going to create a new constant and I'm going to destructure the values from the use state hook, as you'll see in a second here. But I'm going to create a new state variable called show banner. And I'm going to add a function that's going to be used to set that value called set show banner. And I'm going to destructure that from use state. Now these brackets here aren't magic. What it's doing is it's using array destructuring to take what's returned from use state, meaning our state variable and the actual function used to update that state variable so that we can have those values to work with inside of our app. But we can also set a default value. And we know that by default, without anything else considered, we wanna make sure that our banner is showing. So inside of use state, I'm going to set that default value of true, meaning yes, true, I do wanna show the banner. 
So now that I have my show banner state value, I'm going to use it to conditionally render my banner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this code with an if conditional that checks to see if that value is truly first. So I'm going to say inside of code brackets, if show banner is true, I'm going to use the double and sign, I'm going to return some code. And that code is going to be my banner. So I'm going to cut it out and I'm going to paste it right inside of that block. So we can see here it's saying if show banner is truly it's going to return this value. And as we might expect, when we refresh the page, we can see that we still see that banner because we haven't actually added anything dynamic, but we set that default value to true. So now to make this banner hidden, we can run this set show banner function, passing in a value of false, meaning this if conditional will be false and it won't render this block so that we can easily hide our banner. So to do this, I'm going to take that set show banner function and I'm going to go to my hide button and I'm going to say right on that button on click, I want to run a function and I'm going to say inside of that function, I want to set show banner and I'm going to set the value to false. And now back inside of my app, if I click hide, we can see that it's immediately hidden. But as I mentioned earlier, by default, React doesn't store that value. So if I refresh the page, we can see that that banner is now back in the page. So this is where local storage comes back in, where we can say that anytime that state updates, we're going to update our local storage state by setting that item. And then anytime we reload the page, we're going to get that saved item and refresh it into our app. So when working in React, we want to avoid adding client side code like that inside of the actual render block. Instead, we want to break out of that. Particularly, we're going to use the use effect hook, which allows us to run the code after the component has been rendered. So I'm going to import my use effect hook from React, and then I'm going to set up a new instance of use effect, where inside what we're going to do is we're going to run a function, and we're going to set up this dependency array so that anytime the component renders, it's going to fire this function. But we want to make sure that this fires anytime the state updates. So we can take show banner, and we can set it as a dependency inside of use effect, meaning it will run as soon as the component renders, but it'll also run anytime show banner changes. And we can test this out by adding a console log statement right inside of that use effect. So now that we can see when we load this page by default it still sets to true. But if we click hide, we can see that that show banner was logged again, showing its current state of false. And again, if we refresh the page, we're going to see that it's showing as true because we're not storing that yet in local storage. So now anytime that changes, we want to run local storage set item. So inside of my use effect, I'm going to particularly reference it from the window, but I'm going to say window.local storage. I'm going to add set item, and then I'm going to use a particular key to set that item with. And this is something that you should probably use for your particular application, such as in my instance, how about I use my welcome banner app. And while that's probably too long and it doesn't need to be something that long like that, it should be something that's likely unique to your particular application, especially if you're developing multiple applications locally. That way you don't run into conflicts when you're using local storage for different applications. But in addition to setting my key, I want to also set the value. And this is going to be where show banner comes in. And because I want to make sure that this is always represented as a string, which is how local storage gets stored, I want to wrap this with JSON dot stringify. And in this particular instance, we might not necessarily need it because we're only storing a Boolean value, which will get turned into a string. It becomes trickier when you have more complex state. Now, once you reload the page, you can head over to the application tab where you can find the local storage section and select your site and you'll be able to immediately see the key value pair for that value that we just set. Now, when we stored this value, we wrapped this in JSON stringify so that it was turned into a string. And as I said, technically a true or false value would get automatically turned into a string. But when we're working with objects, that's not the effect that we're going to get. For instance, if I paste in that same set item statement and I change my key to test, and if I change instead of JSON stringify, I'm just going to pass in a raw object and let's just say test true. And if I hit enter here, we can see that it stored my test, but it was stored as this object string. And this isn't something that's going to be useful for me for future reference. This is just a string that describes what it is that I stored. Now, if I run that command again, but this time I wrap it with my json.stringify and make sure I add that closing paren, we can see that it gets updated and I can see that object value and we can even see that I can preview that data. And this means that when I try to hydrate it and grab that data, I can then parse it and turn it back into a regular object. 
But for now, we're just dealing with our simple Boolean value so that we can see how this works. But now that we have this stored value, let's grab that value so we can update the state of our application whenever that changes. So we have our first use effect instance where here we're setting the value anytime it changes. But now let's use another use effect to actually grab the value when the page first loads. So I'm going to add use effect and inside I'm going to this time set an empty dependency array because we only want this to happen the first time the page loads. But this time now we can grab the value that we stored and I'm going to first set it in a constant. So I'm going to say constant data is equal to window dot local storage. But this time I'm going, to, I'm going to use get item and I'm going to say that I want to grab it using that same key. Now let's quickly console log that out just to see what that looks like. I'm going to add my console log of data. And if we reload the page for the first time, we can see that data is shown as true for the value that we're getting. But now if I click hide, we can see that this local storage value was changed to false. And if I click refresh, we can see that that first data value that's going to get logged out is false. Now we can see that my welcome banner was reverted to true because I didn't actually grab that value to hydrate my React state before it could load. But now we can take that saved value and we can do just that. Now, ultimately, we can take set show banner and we can set it as that data value. But first of all, remember, we want to make sure that because we stringified it, that we also use json.parse to grab that value so that if we are using something more complex than a true or false, or even if we're using that, we can actually get the value as it's meant to be stored. But also, if we're not able to actually find that state value, such as if somebody visited for the first time or somebody clears their browsing session, we want to make sure that we don't pass in invalid data because that value will simply default to null. So we want to make sure that we say if data does not equal null, then we'll run that set show banner. But now when we load the page, we can see that by default, again, we have our welcome banner to true. But if I click hide, we can see that it was automatically updated to that false value. But now if I try to refresh the page, we can see that as soon as it loads, I no longer get that banner and it's still persisted as that false value. Now, if you're quick to see it, you might recognize that if you're at the very, very top, you might get a little bit of a flash from that value. But ultimately, we want to make sure that we are able to persist the actual experience. And typically, when we're working with something like a cart, usually that value that is updated quick enough that somebody can still see the data as they're working through their application. As developers, we need to make sure that as we're building app experiences, that we're able to do things that help make it easier for our visitors to actually use our application. And that might mean saving and persisting state as they use that application. That makes taking advantage of using local storage a great way to be able to persist that state right inside of React. What's your favorite use case of local storage or where has it been helpful for you in the past? Let me know in the comments. If you want to learn more about using native APIs inside of React, you can check out my video triggering a function when scrolling to an element in React with the intersection observer to see how we can change content or update content whenever somebody scrolls to an element. Or if you want to learn how to use browser event listeners to do things like allow somebody to use keyboards to navigate search autocomplete results, check out my video browser event listeners in React in search an autocomplete. If you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up, subscribe, and click that little notification bell for future web dev content. Thanks for watching.